By far, the most common message I get on YouTube are from young reviewers who are looking for ways of improving. They want me to watch their videos and critique them, let them know what they can do differently. They're just generally looking for advice and opinions. And, you know, that's something that's really hard to come by when you're just starting. And I understand that. But it's not really possible for me to answer every single one mostly because I don't get that much free time to begin with, and so what I do ends up going toward my videos. So, and I, it, it's really unfair of me to pick and choose who gets viewed and which ones I critique. So, the most fair thing I can do is refuse all of those requests. And for a long time now, that's kind of been a failing point of mine. So, this video is for anyone who has ever asked me for advice, or anyone who uh, is just curious and wants to know how to improve their own game. Now, first off, I am no expert, okay? I am not the guy to tell you how to do your videos, I'm not claiming I know everything. I know I don't, and I'll tell you why at the end of the video. But since this is such a common request, I thought, let's just make a bullet point here. Let's run down, say, ten rules of what I try to follow when I review. So. Let's get started. Rule number one, the box is useless. It might not be the biggest mistake you can make, but by far, it is the one I see the most. People making very boring introductions to their reviews by talking about a piece of cardboard. Understand, the people who are watching your videos are trying to find out if the toy is worth buying or not. They want to see if it's worth putting down the money to have something to play with which has nothing to do with the piece of cardboard it comes in. This, this is just something designed to protect your toy from the factory to your home, as well as convince a collector or kid to buy it in the store. I mean, if you're reviewing the box, I mean, you speak, well, you know, there's the name of the series, and there's a nice big color photo of the box, and okay, we got, oh, we got another photo on the side, and there's another photo, and look at the back, look got nice poses you can make, and uh, all the accessories it comes with, the effect part, and all the extra hands, and... Aren't you doing a review of the toy? I mean, aren't you going to explain and describe and show off all of those things already? You probably are. I, I hope you are. So, you know, why waste two or three minutes in the review talking about a piece of cardboard? Skip it. It's... you never ever talk about the box because it has nothing to do with why people are watching your video. Unless it is a very, very special point to the figure. For instance, um, let's say the Generation 2 version of Generations Bruticus. The whole box is made to look like the old Generation 2 90s style packaging, right down to the tech specs and all the cross cells, and it, it looks spot on, and that is part of the novelty, the fact that it comes packaged that way. That is cool. That is worth a mention. But just a mention. If it's the, if the box is extraordinary, spend 30 seconds, no more than a minute on it. Get it out of the way, because nobody wants to hear what the toy comes in. Rule number two. It doesn't have to be expensive. These days, I'm using Adobe Premiere to do all of my editing, but that's kind of a high-end piece of software in order to do which is what amounts to just basic video chopping. No, everyone gets their start with the free stuff. iMovie, Windows Movie Maker, it's a necessary first step. And in general, you don't want to dive headfirst into any element of this until you are absolutely sure of what you're getting into. If you've got any device, uh, a phone or a, just a, your usual snap camera with a video mode on it. Get video that way to start off with. Yes, it might be crap compared to the HD you're watching now, but the important thing is that you get the footage, you get something you can play with in an editing program and figure out without spending a dime if this is really for you. Now, generally I say you really don't have to spend anything. Most of what you get is either, most of what you need is either free or you have a device that can already do it. 
But there is one investment. There's only one investment I would say that everyone needs to make, and that is in lights. Okay? You don't have to spend a lot on them, but lights are very important when you're shooting a video because your camera might have a low light setting, but it's not going to compensate for everything, and it's not going to look nearly as good. Now, what I'm currently using to light this video, very simple. There are two little uh, reading lamps, a little clamp-on kind that I got from Walmart. In each one, I have a bright white spiral light bulb, which is important because if it's the normal kind, there's a yellow tint that will throw off the color of the toy you're reviewing. So make sure it's the pure white kind. But yeah, my lights right now, uh, that costs probably 20, 25 bucks. And they've lasted me for years. You know, when I'm just shooting a toy, that's really all I need. So get everything done for free first. Try it out. Don't dive into any of this because it does get very, very expensive. Rule number three, keep it clean. Keep in mind your presentation isn't just about the toy you're reviewing. Yes, if it's been around for a while, dust it off, make sure it's nice and clean and presentable. But don't neglect yourself as well, and don't neglect the area around you. If you're filming on a desk, clear up the little stuff around you. Uh, try to make sure the toy is the focus and not the little distractions. You know, I kind of have that problem keeping all these behind me. Um, and if you can, store your video reviewing area away, which is what I do. Here's mine. This is just a black foam board I got from Walmart. Like I said, it doesn't have to be expensive. But generally, this, these are the kind I review on. This one is the old one that I use the inch board on. Uh, when I changed my reviewing style, this kind of became impractical and the usefulness of it kind of wore off. So, I, don't, I haven't used this one in a while and it's also kind of getting dirty. So I ended up replacing it. And I'll, I'll probably end up replacing the current one in a couple months. But, you know, again, it's a nice cheap investment. It keeps things clean, and you can store it away so nothing's going to happen to it, nothing's going to get messy on it, or anything like that. So it's a nice, inexpensive way of putting up a stage to review on that, really, you can do anything with, and um, we'll, we'll just generally keep a nice, clean presentation. Also... Don't neglect your hands. For most reviewers, the one part the viewer is going to see of you are the hands. Uh, I keep a set of nail clippers with a cleaner attachment by my camera so I don't forget to clean under my nails. That can get really distracting and it can actually be kind of disgusting. And you'd be surprised how many viewers it turns off just because you forgot to actually kind of tidy up. Uh, though I wouldn't suggest trimming them if you're a Transformer reviewer because, well, sometimes if you're trying to get something transformed fast on camera, little nails are probably the only thing that's going to get it done. So, in general, just be neat and tidy. Number four, organize thoughts. These days I'm fully scripting my reviews, but that's not something that's necessary in order to do it. In general, if you're the kind that just likes to record, point the camera, and just go with it, I would at least suggest bullet pointing your thoughts beforehand. Open up a notepad document, just type it out, make sure you have in mind every little point you want to get across, and the order you want to get them across, across so it makes sense through the video. Now, you got to remember everything about the toy. So don't just rely on what you have noticed. Go to other reviews, make sh uh, text reviews or product descriptions. Make sure you know all the features of the toy and all the little tricks behind it. You know, no one's perfect. I mean, I screw up and forget features and transformation steps more than I probably should. But you really want to keep that to a bare minimum to make sure you're properly representing the toy. And you can lead to some pretty bad mistakes if you forgot to mention a gimmick or something like that. And suddenly your review is all about what you forgot, not what you said. So you really need to do that. And one big thing that will help you, dry runs. I cannot stress the importance of dry runs often enough. That's, for those who don't know what that is, that's basically just you going through what you're going to say without turning anything on. No camera, no nothing. Basically, just get the ideas flowing through your head, 
out your mouth and make sure you kn they sound good and you know what you're speaking about. That way, when you turn on the camera, you're more likely to keep your thoughts organized and more likely to present something that sounds very clean and professional. You know, so, yes, you do have to run through the script twice that way, but it will save you so much work later if you already know what you're going to say, how you're going to say it. Trust me, in the long run, it's a little bit more work in the short term, but in the long run, it's going to save you a lot more work. Rule number five, learn to trim. By far, the most important tool that you will use in editing is the trim function. It's the most basic editing tool that Movie Maker and iMovie have, and it's still the one I use the most in Premiere, despite all the weird effects and things that I like to throw in from time to time. It's important because when you learn how to trim up your videos, and rather than just posting one long take as your review, and just hoping for the best, when you learn how to trim out things, you can take out all the ums and uhs and hesitations and repetitions. You can clean up your stuff post-production so that it sounds much better the second time through. And yes, it might make for a herky-jerky video when you're new at this and not ready for how to handle it, which there are ways of correcting. There's transitions and such that'll smooth it out. But for the most part, the most important thing is the flow of the audio. You want the sound of your voice to be constant and you don't want it interrupted and ums and ahs and you don't want the pacing messed up because you trim too closely or there's too wide of a gap between lines. That's more distracting to most than the video is. And while both are important, the sound is really the one you want to prioritize. So trimming things out might make the video a little bit jerky, but the audio will be fine. And that's one of the basics you have to pick up before you can really move on to the huge things. And don't be scared of how much trimming there is. I mean, I personally leave more on the cutting room floor than actually ends up in the video. It's important to do that because once you learn how to trim properly, you don't need to start your video over just because you kept screwing up. You can cut out everything and retake. Or if you didn't like how a line sounded, if you didn't think you got your point across properly, if you forgot a feature, you don't have to stop and redo the whole thing. Just mark tape and do it again. Because you can always trim it out later. So that's the first thing to do to step your game up. Going from the one long continuous take review to actual cutting and editing. It's getting to be a very basic thing now, but I still see a lot who neglect it. So that's probably the first technical skill you want to work on. Number six, control. It still kind of surprises me how many times I see videos from people who are trying to hold their camera while they demonstrate a toy. And, you know, I've seen Let's Plays that where people were just holding the camera at the TV the whole time while they tried to play. Never a good idea because when the camera is shaking and jerking around, you, you can't really give someone a good look at the toy when you don't stop on the toy long enough for them to see all the details and pay attention to it. Generally a bad idea. It's the worst idea. The worst thing. So, no matter what, maintain control of your footage. You know, whether that's uh, any outside distractions are keeping that from happening or whether it's just how you position a camera and how you uh, how you record with it. Now what I'm using right now is a tripod which has been my faithful companion for many years now but the tripod is one of those really beefy ones it's got a level in it and everything it's you know it's really telescopes really high it's really expensive. Uh, you can get you can get small ones. Uh, if you're just doing this on a desktop, then a desktop model is just fine. It's like ten bucks. It, you know, it won't set you far back. Or, like I said, try it for free any way it takes. Which means, in this case, stack up some books or <laughs> stack up boxes. There's the way a box comes in handy for a review. Just whatever it takes to get the camera out of your hands and keep it still while you're reviewing and you wouldn't that's a very basic thing but I do still see people messing it up so 
again, that's just a, these are just basic rules, and that is one of the most fundamental ones. Number seven, do what others are doing. No matter how original you try to be, no matter how clever you try to be with your presentation, there's always going to be some things that are common across the board for reviewers. Uh, for instance, I get criticized a lot for ripping off Vangelis, who's a friend of mine, so I'm not quite sure how that works. Uh, because, well, apparently because I review Transformers and Kamen Riders with a dark black background. And not really. We both use a dark background because it helps present the toy better. You know, it just it puts it in better contrast. So I never really understood that comparison. But, you know, we both did it for the same reasons. Why I dumped the whiteboard. Just because it became very difficult to review with a white background. The black is just so much easier. <laughs> and it presents the toys so much better. So, there are other reasons. Um, like I said, there's just some little things that all rev all videos do, and that's the kind of stuff you want to watch for. And not just because of what they're doing, but why they're doing it. For instance, uh, if you see me review a common Rider belt or something, there would be a lot of shots where you probably notice I could close in a lot more, I could fill up more of the frame to show to get the toy much a little bit bigger and show the detail a little bit better. I choose not to because I don't want to crowd the frame. Because once you do that, you, you kind of give people a claustrophobic feeling. And you wouldn't think that when you're just watching a little web video. But it's kind of an old film thing where the same reason why a, a Dutch angle works in horror movies because your brain is tuned to think if things look diagonal something is wrong, you know, and that's what builds your suspense in your mind and gets the feel and, and the, uh, the, 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 that's what gets the terror across because it's kind of putting your brain in a different position than it normally is. And that's the, the same way with the frame. You don't want to make the viewer feel claustrophobic. So, it's little things like that, but once you start watching for those things and you start asking, why do I do it that way? You can start watching back on your own videos and finding the things for yourself that could be improved. Things that you were doing a little bit off or, well, that could be better. Well, why am I doing it that way? It's an important step to learn how to critique your own videos and find your own level of improvement. And there's always room for improvement. I tell people all the time, if you're satisfied with how your videos are coming out, your videos are never going to get any better than that. <laughs> there's always room for improvement. Every video should be a learning experience. So, whether it's your own videos or someone else's, learn whatever you can from them. Rule number eight. Don't do what others are doing. While there are many common elements to reviews, there are are signature elements that you just have to avoid. You know, you know, personally, I, I don't think I do anything too similar. It's more of a stylistic choice and a choice of how the review flows that makes my videos different. But, you know, you take a look at Vangelis's and you have the subtitles, which is his way of interjecting humor into his videos. And it's a brilliant little gimmick for them. You know, it, it's, it makes the videos highly entertaining. So that's something you never want to do, is you never want to see those things and go, oh, that's a good idea, let me try that. Because the second you take anything from someone else, you have no longer created anything new, and no one's going to pay attention to it. Unless they are going to troll you for just being a ripoff. And a lot of reasons why that happens is because sometimes it's more comfortable for a new reviewer to kind of take on someone else's traits that, they're, that they've seen and enjoyed and they're familiar with. That way, they can kind of get into it a little bit more. But that's because they're emulating somebody else's style, not creating something of their own. In this reviewing circle, this circus there is on the internet, you have to keep in mind, you are up against millions of other entertainment options that are available with just a few clicks. So, you have to find your own voice. That will make you stand out. And it will come with time. Don't rush it. I mean, 
as you get more comfortable with the camera, and you will eventually. I mean, go go take a look at some of my old reviews, and you could tell like I'm just not as expressive or emotive. I have this very deadpan voice to my reviews, and uh, it's one of those things that I, I wish I could go back and do it again because uh, I could. I'm so much more comfortable talking to this inanimate object on a tripod now. You do get over that. As you become more comfortable, as you do this more often, it will happen. And as you do, you will find a voice of your own. And that voice is going to be what sets you apart from anyone else. You know, it might be a style, it might be a gimmick, it might be a character. Whatever it turns out to be, if it's yours, it will do you well. Number nine, keep involved. Probably one of the biggest problems for new reviewers is getting their name out there and getting that initial attention that's going to snowball into an actual fan base. That's an extremely difficult thing to get these days because that kind of advertising on sites and such has gotten a lot stricter than it used to. A lot of forums don't want a bunch of spam for someone looking for attention. And speaking of, never be that guy that tries to get views by mass emailing or private messaging a bunch of other video people trying to get them to watch and trying to build an audience that way. All you've done is reduce yourself to a spammer and I guarantee you it's not going to get you anywhere it's just going to get you ignored. So you could really be hurting yourself by going to that route. Never do it. Ever do it. The way you get started, the way you first make a name for yourself is by keeping involved in the communities that are focused around the thing that you're reviewing. So, for instance, for Transformers, you know, I got my start by advertising my reviews on sites like TFW2005, collector forums, where uh, they do have sections set away for video reviewers, but what's usually more effective is keeping involved in the conversations that are going on there with and using a signature banner it, uh, that will advertise. You know, as long as you make it nice and eye-catching, people will notice it and say, ooh, this is what this guy is up to. So every post you make is advertisement for what you do. And only a few people might see it, but if you're a regular on the forum, eventually a lot will see it. And if you come into discussions with interesting observations or good points to make that are very discussable topics, people are going to be interested in what you have to say and want to hear a little bit more from you. So that's really the best way of getting started and initially getting your name out there. Try to find the forums that are a little bit more friendly to that than others and try and find the discussions that are relevant to what you are doing. It might take a while. I will you know, the way I describe it is I spent six months entertaining 23 people. You know, I didn't get my subscriber count overnight. So, it is a persistence thing. But once you hit a certain point, the beast starts growing all by itself. So, it is just something you have to do when you're starting out. So, it's not, a, it's not something you have to be completely diligent over. It's just a necessary first step. And rule number 10 have fun. This is by far the most important rule. No matter what you do, no matter how you choose to style your videos, no matter how you choose to record them or prepare for them, the most important thing you do with them is have fun. You know, despite all, you know, this is why I made a list of rules instead of giving direct advice to people. Because you shouldn't be concerned with what other people think of how you do your reviews. You shouldn't be listening to their criticism. You shouldn't be listening to the trolls that are just trying to upset you. Do the videos the way you enjoy doing them. Right? It is why I am not an expert on telling you how to do your videos, because the only expert of that is you. You know, I am an expert of how TJ Omega likes to do reviews, and that is all I want to be and that's all I have any right to be. So, you are the one who decides if your reviews are being done right or wrong, which is why you have to learn how to observe your own videos in order to find out what is wrong with them and how to improve. What's important about this and how it translates, 
to what you do on camera is the enjoyment comes through. If people can hear that you are genuinely enjoying what you do, if you are passionate and you have this, you know, whether it's a toy, a video game, whatever you're reviewing, if people can hear that you do have a drive to do this and you are enjoying what you are doing, they will stick with you. It will make your videos far more compelling and it will make you worth coming back for. That is what will eventually build your audience. Not the gimmicks, not the jokes, not anything. It's a tangible element. It's possibly the only tangible element you can get through a camera is if you are passionate about this, if you know that this is something you love and you want others to know how much you love it, they will hear it and they will stick with you through it. So by far, the most important thing, do the videos the way you want to do them because that is the only person you have to please, is you. Everyone else will come when the time is right. So, I hope those 10 rules have helped somebody out there. I know a lot of reviewers have always wanted some advice from me, so there's, a, there's guideposts for you. And as a quick little last bit of advice, um, since I do see it more commonly, it's not a rule, but I do see it too much. If you break the toy on camera, scrap it. Don't try to keep going. I see that way too often. Because the review is no longer about you, it is no longer about the toy. It is about you have broken the toy and kept going. So, like I said, I, I, I guess that's where it's important to learn how to retake. So, I hope I hope this helps everyone out. I hope you found something that you can apply in all of this, and hopefully, I'll continue to follow those rules.